Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 8. Today we're going to be talking about an article that has been posted from The Flash Podcast. You can check out their interview with Eric Wallace in audio form and also on their website, which will be in the link in the description below. There was quite a lot of interesting things that they talked about in part one of their interview. Part two is going to be released pretty soon, and I'm sure there's some interesting stuff that Andy from The Flash Podcast was able to ask Eric Wallace, the showrunner of The Flash. So, without further ado, if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so we're going to be going through this interview. There's quite a lot of interesting topics that they talk about. I'm going to talk about the one that interests me the most at first, just so that you guys get to see what I'm thinking about and, you know, my sort of theories about this specific thing. However, we're going to be continuing on and, and going through some of the other questions that was asked later in the interview. So let's go ahead and get into this. So the Flash podcast asks, after seeing the reception that Armageddon got, if there is a ninth season, what are the chances that we may see a graphic novel in this kind of scope again at the start of next season? So Eric Wallace replies, yeah, I was obviously very happy that people seemed to respond favorably to it. Talking about Armageddon here. And again, knock on whatever imaginary object we could be knocking on. If we are lucky enough to get a season 9, I do have a crazy idea that I would love to do as a nice big kickoff to the season with some guest stars. I don't want to get my hopes up yet. I, like the rest of you all, are still waiting for a pickup too. So let's break down this paragraph first. There is still two more paragraphs to Eric's answer. So first off, season 9 isn't confirmed even though there's been hints by The Hollywood Reporter and even with Grant negotiating his contract that season 9 is going to happen, there's been nothing official yet and Eric Wallace, as far as he's telling us, it hasn't been confirmed yet. But the big thing about this question is because The Flash Podcast is asking about will there be an Armageddon Part 2 basically, like is there going to be a similar event at the start of next season? And so it seems, according to Eric Wallace, that he wants to start the season in a similar way if he was lucky enough to get a season 9 with some guest stars. And I really love this idea. I love the idea of kicking off the season with a huge bang with like 5 episodes just like Armageddon. I thought Armageddon was great. Obviously it leaves a lot of expectations to the rest of the season because it starts off in such a kind of crazy way with all these characters showing up, but we're going to have to wait and see if that actually happens, but I think it's a great idea and it's a way to bring in characters every year. Let's move on to the next paragraph of his answer. Eric Wallace goes, but I know how these things work from a more practical level. If we are lucky enough to get a pickup, then very quickly I'm going to be asked, hey, what's the story next year? I can't wait that long. I need to have a plan in place now. So that's been my job over the last couple months or so. I would like to have the people who were on the show before in Armageddon, but there's also some new folks. So potentially, this is me talking now, some of the people that we saw before, also some new people maybe you haven't seen on The Flash or older people who have been in past crossovers that he wants to bring back. He goes on to say, I won't spoil it, but one of the people I'm actually having a conversation with in two weeks is a Supergirl alum who has never been on our show before and I'm going to try and get that individual notice I did not use any pronouns onto our show in some way because I love the character so much and it's just one step at a time. So this was the thing that got me most excited because this is Eric Wallace confirming that he's having a meeting with a past Supergirl actor. So that actor is potentially going to be showing up in a future episode of The Flash. Now, from what he's been saying in this paragraph, you would presume this meeting is going to be talking about next season, talking about the start of next season, because at the moment they are writing the season finale for The Flash, and they are preparing for next season, as Eric Wallace has said throughout this answer. So it's actually very beneficial to have meetings very early, especially in the film and TV industry, because actors are obviously very busy and they have to shoot for a long time. So getting them locked in and interested early on is very important. And so this Supergirl alum, who could it be? Well, my mind initially straight away goes to someone like Nia Now, aka Dreamer, because I feel like that is a Supergirl character that was cut short because of Supergirl ending, and I feel like Nicole being so committed to the character would totally love to come back at any point. 
And as far as I've done in my research and I found out, I don't think Nicole has actually ever shown up on The Flash. Now that doesn't mean she hasn't shown up on any other shows, but as far as I'm aware, she never has showed up on The Flash in Crisis on Infinite Earths or Elseworlds or anything like that. So I think that person that Eric Wallace might be talking to could be Nicole Maines. And I know she's booked something recently, but I don't think it's anything like super permanent. But this filming for season nine wouldn't start for a while. In fact, it would probably start sometime in the summer. So it's still like many, many months away. And we don't even have an official confirmation for season nine as of right now. But considering he's having these conversations, it seems Eric is pretty hopeful that they're going to get season 9. But what do you guys think about that? Like, who do you think the Supergirl character is going to be? Which actor do you think it is? Do you think it could be Katie McGrath as Lena? I don't recall if she's shown up on any Flash episodes or not, so it could be that. But for now, I'm going to stick with my guess that it is, in fact, Nicole Maines as Dreamer, who could show up on The Flash. So yeah, let's move on to the next thing. That is obviously a great way to kind of start this off and big props to Andy and the Flash podcast for getting that answer out of Eric Wallace. Okay, so we have a couple more answers that we're going to be going through. So the Flash podcast asks, with Despero as the Armageddon villain, we really see your penchant for pulling villains out of obscurity and putting your own spin on them. What is the process for selecting what comic book characters are going to make it onto the page and how do you decide what changes about them? So Eric Wallace replies and I'm going to read out the whole thing here and I'll analyze it afterwards. The first thing is you have to balance one or two things. One, what villain am I a fan of as a comic book fan? I'm a huge Justice League of America fanatic and my favorite two Justice League villains among them are Amazo and Despero. Those are two of my all-time favorites and obviously we've seen iterations of them before. I managed to talk Todd in season five into doing Amazo. He's like, who? I'm like, he steals the power. It's really great. We're going to do this thing. It's one of those things where Todd just went, okay, I need a villain. Just do your thing. Sam was my co-writer on that episode and he's a fellow really super comic geeky guy. We're like, we just got the keys to the kingdom, let's do this. But in the back of my mind, I've had Despero sitting in there waiting for the right moment. So that's one. The other thing is you look at the story that's being told emotionally. And in this case, it's a season of leveling up. The Flash has leveled up, so the villains have leveled up too. They had to be way more powerful than anybody the Flash has faced before. That meant somebody who was alien right there. Looking for an alien, loving Despero, now it starts to come together right. So this is Eric Wallace talking about how the future villains of the season past Despero after these interlude episodes that we're on right now are going to be extremely powerful. And apparently, according to Eric Wallace, there is going to be two villains and two more graphic novels this season. So they've got a lot to cram in in the final, I don't know how many episodes, but I presume there's about 18 episodes this season. And currently we just saw episode six. So he goes on to talk a bit more about Despero. I'm just going to skip one paragraph to when he says, we actually were going to have more of the purple fin version of Despero in episode two of season eight. But when I saw the dailies coming back from episode one, I realized it would almost be a mistake to put that kind of facade in between the character's emotions and the audience. I actually dialed it back as it needs to be justified by the story. That's why you see him in very specific moments as the digital version versus very specific moments as the human version. And so, for example, in episode four of season eight, when he's torturing Cecile and he's just killed all of Team Flash, I felt that that would be more emotionally powerful in his human form because of the nature of human beings and our capacity for violence. And so it's interesting to hear about the changes that Eric and the team made about Despero and the fact that he used to have this kind of purple fin version of himself and they were going to do that in the digital CGI version of the character. However, they dialed that back after wanting it to be more realistic, I guess. And that's why Despero doesn't look exactly like he does in the comics, although he does look kind of crazy still in the TV show when he is the CGI version. But that's why you see a lot of him in his human form. And I have to agree, I think we connect way more when Tony Curran, who played Despero, was in his human form. Okay, so let's move on to the next thing. 
So the Flash Podcast asks, something that we on the podcast talked about for years is wanting to see that future timeline that Eobard comes from and his origin of really becoming the reverse Flash. What are the chances that after we got in Armageddon and what you said about him being sprinkled through the season, we'll get to see that backstory between them on screen? Now, I think this is a very interesting question and this is how Eric Wallace responded. It was one of those things I specifically wanted to do in Armageddon and one of the things that I specifically wanted to do this season in case it's our last. I have to provide the origin story, the audience needs to know this, I as a fan need to know this. We got to the story of episode 5 in season 8, which is one of my favourite scenes in Armageddon, which was the scene between Caitlyn and Reverse Flash. As far as going to the 23rd century and actually seeing it, obviously as you might imagine, it's something that I'd love to do. It's a wee bit cost prohibitive, I'm not gonna lie, that would be a reason for a season 9 maybe. There's only so much that we can do, that's why we got to go to 2049, it's not too far removed. It's the future but there's not people in hover cars flying by. It's not Minority Report, obviously. I'll be honest with you, yes I'd love to see the origin play out and revisited, I just don't know if it's possible and when or if we can get to do it. So that's interesting and that is something that obviously we as fans and even Eric Wallace agrees that he would like to see. However, zipping to the 23rd century is going to be expensive, which is probably one of the reasons why we never saw the Legion of Superheroes on Supergirl because it's just way too expensive to create a whole new world through CGI or set design when you can go to the kind of near future like 2049 and have real sets but slightly alter them and just slightly change things to kind of hint that this is the future. But definitely that is something that I would like to see as a Flash fan. I'm sure most of you guys watching this video would agree. This is another really interesting question. So the Flash podcast asks, with Iris now being a podcaster as well, I know some fans were curious about the chances of Iris interviewing the Flash because we've seen Lois Lane interview Superman and such. Eric's answer was this. That's actually something we talked about and ended up going in a different direction with because the story that was being told through Iris and her investigative kind of journey that she goes on in the middle of the season didn't quite lend itself to that scene, but we do see more of her Citizen Topia podcasting towards the end of the season. It actually plays a very emotional role in a very special episode right in the middle of the season. I won't tell you why, but I will say look for it because I just watched the cut yesterday after I stopped weeping so much. I like this question because it's not something that I would have initially thought to ask someone like Eric Wallace, and it's right. Lois interviewing Superman was something that everyone was intrigued by, and when you think about it, The Flash hasn't actually been properly interviewed, I think, ever. Like, I don't remember him actually going to someone and talking properly. Yeah, he talked to Iris in the past when Iris didn't know who he was, but I don't remember The Flash actually ever having like a quote or something. He's been featured in newspapers, obviously, because he's a superhero, especially when he first came around, because that was completely out of nowhere. There was a superhero in the city saving everyone, stopping the criminals. But having an interview would be really interesting, and it would give a better insight to the citizens of Central City. And with what Iris is doing with CC Citizen Media now, it would make sense if she had some sort of exclusive coverage talking with The Flash. That's definitely something I would be interested in seeing, and I think it actually kind of makes sense if that happened, especially with Iris expanding her kind of journalism output. I have one more question I want to go over, and this is at the start of the article. So the Flash podcast asks, I love how Armageddon went back to Eobard Thorne instantly, which is interesting because we usually don't see him for a while after an appearance. Why was it important to make sure that he was the driving force of this graphic novel? Well, it was funny. First of all, we had to hide the fact that he was in Armageddon. We had to do that because we knew in episode 1 where we were driving to, and we know that in episode 3, at the end of the episode, he's going to be at the wedding, and there's going to be this big surprise. So we had to make sure that with Despero, we were really almost misdirecting the audience and saying, no, no, this is your sole villain. He's the sole bad guy, because Reverse Flash is such an integral part of Season 8 as a whole. I don't think it's a spoiler to say that he's sprinkled out in very mysterious ways. I would say to keep an eye out for him 
in ways you may not be expecting, but it was all part of the plan because Batman has Joker, Superman has Lex Luthor, and the Flash has Reverse Flash. You have to honor that if we're trying to tell the ultimate Flash story, especially in our graphic novels. We have three this year, by the way, in terms of graphic novels, that's new. We have one at the top, one in the middle, and one at the end, and they're all bookended in such a way that we're telling a very big reverse Flash story. Something very big. Okay, so that is super interesting. So this is Eric Wallace coming out and confirming this season, all of our episodes are gonna be somehow linked to reverse Flash. There's going to be sprinkles of him everywhere, and Armageddon was just the beginning. So from this, you can infer that at one point, surely Reverse Flash is going to be showing up at some point. If the story is Reverse Flash centric, even if he doesn't show up for like the next 10 episodes, he's going to be teased in ways that we're not expecting according to Eric Wallace. So what do you guys think about that? I'm super excited to see the rest of the season. I think this was a great interview. Go check it out in the description below in audio form or written form on the Flash podcast. And so for now, thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos. And you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.